Hi everyone, welcome to Fleet Equipment from the Floor Act Expo 2023 post show show. The post show show. Post show show, powered by Cummins. I'm Jason Morgan, content director for Fleet Equipment. And with me is David Sickles, senior editor for Fleet Equipment. David, great to have you. Great to be here. Hey, so uh, we had a great time. Clearly, we're not at the show. So we're from the floor, but we're going to talk about the show. We're going to talk about what it means. We're going to talk about all the things that, that came across us as we had our conversations. Uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to start with one of the big things um, that people were talking about is this show has grown considerably, oh right? It's huge. Year over year, it's moving the Vegas to an even bigger venue next year. Uh, and, and the... The sentiment is this is kind of becoming the trucking industry show. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I've heard that a lot. Okay. Well, right. I was at the show. Right. And, you know, thinking about that, I've been thinking about that a lot since the show. What's interesting is I agree there's a lot of technology coming through. There's a, there's a lot of need for a show so that people can understand this technology as it comes up. But, you know, what it also means to me in some regard is uh, if you say this is the, the, the show, the tentpole show for the industry, does that indicate that this is just the way equipment spec and decisions are going to be made going forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. Alternative maybe isn't the term now. It's just the show, the industry. You not only have to decide on diesel powertrains, but you're going to have to decide on lower emissions and sustainable zero emissions powertrains going forward. Yeah, yeah. And like we talk about all the time, you know, diesel can still be sustainable. You can become more sustainable using diesel fuels. So it's not just about that, you know, alternative kind of moniker. It's about how you are kind of aligning your operations to be more sustainable no matter what your powertrain is. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's the it's the role that plays in greater sustainability. Decarbonization, I know we've often referred to NACFI's messy middle in right. battery electric where there's an end there's an end point and a start point and then we have to figure it all out. I feel like it's just now on a larger scale because it's not just battery electric, it's hydrogen, it's natural gas, it's all these other solutions that to me, as a fleet, I would have to figure out how that fits into my applications and meets demands, right? It's not really unlike specking transmission or axle ratios or tires or other things. It's it's a little scarier because uh, it's new technology. Uh, you want to understand how it fits in your application. And yeah, you just, you always knew to some degree you were getting a diesel engine. Now that's in question, right? You always yes. had a choice of diesel engine, but now it's do I go natural gas for the time being? What do I look for in hydrogen fuel cell and all those kind of questions? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And one of the big, big, big takeaways from this show was all about the infrastructure. I mean, you've got, you're specking your equipment. That's a huge part of it. And we all need to understand that and better understand it. There's all this new technology that we're running into that I'm, for the first time at this show, I'm seeing some new technology. Right. That's really important. But the infrastructure part of it that is just as important, if not more important than the equipment itself. Because if you are specking a certain kind of equipment, if you're going for hydrogen fuel cell or battery electric or whatever it might be, if the infrastructure isn't there to support it, what are you doing? You know, you, you've got to be able to get to the finish line with it and they kind of have to go hand in hand. And that was a big part of DTNA's president keynote right. during the show. He was saying, hey, we've got the equipment. Right. We're ready with the equipment. Where's the infrastructure? It's still not at the level we need it to be. Right. And speaking of that, we actually have a clip here. So here is a segment from John O'Leary, president and CEO of Daimler Truck North America, uh, part of his keynote address where he talks about that infrastructure need. And I mean, it's really impressive and eye-opening. So here we go. At Daimler Truck, we've calculated the dollar investment in charging infrastructure required to meet nationwide 2032 climate targets and it will take roughly $52 billion just for medium and heavy duty vehicles. That is the commitment required to meet the need for increased energy generation, transmission, and distribution. But it does not include the cost of real estate to site those charger installations. More immediately and locally to meet California's requirements, 30 DC chargers per day need to be opened between now and 2026. It's clear that we cannot do this alone, even with the strength of our three companies. It's clear we cannot do this alone as an industry. There are more than 3,000 different electric utilities in the United States. Together with their regulators, they're focused on delivering cost-effective power to their customers. Understandably, those customers are unready to bear the brunt of rising rates 
to offset the cost of major infrastructure projects that they don't see as directly benefiting them. But to meet the requirements of regulatory action, to meet the ambitions of our nation and this industry, we need utilities to act now in order to create a bare minimum of operability. So a great representation there of the now battery electric charging infrastructure need. And O'Leary was very, you know, uh, I, I, we've talked with him throughout the years uh, as electric trucks have been rolling out. This mm -hmm. year, talking with him, we I had the chance to sit down uh, with him pre-show because mm -hmm. uh, they did launch the Freightliner EM2 medium duty uh, truck and they had a, had a preview event there before the show for media. I had a chance to sit with down with him before uh, before his keynote. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think this was one of the strongest uh, uh, cases for decarbonization and the reality of it, right? He was very uh, clear that these conversations are happening. This isn't just a PR bullet point for companies or fleets. This isn't just um, something to uh, 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 to please the board or, or operate members. Yes. These are yes. how customers are, are are making these decisions. They're really having hydrogen conversations. They're demanding yeah. more battery electric trucks. I mean, he was saying that hundreds, hundreds more that they could sell in the, the e Cascadias. They just need the infrastructure to do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And hundreds of trucks. I mean, that's a lot of trucks when you're talking about battery electric. Um, Green Lane. Green Lane. Uh, so DTNA has a big part in uh, bringing out Green Lane. Uh, they're partnering with Nextera and BlackRock on this. So Green Lane, it's putting in that infrastructure. It's trying to advance that infrastructure. Right. That's a big one. Uh, we also heard a lot about Watt EVs. Uh, you know, they've got their own charging station that they're putting in at the Port of Long Beach, hoping that that's going to advance some things a little bit. Um, one of the big things that I was hearing at the show, uh, both during the educational sessions, during the keynotes, uh, working with utilities. Now, you know, sometimes you hear, okay, it can be kind of a pain. Sometimes, though, it can be, a, it's, it's a real partnership. You know what I mean? You've got to get in there early. You know, if 18, these 18 to 24 month kind of runways to get those installed, it's too long. We need to shorten that up. We need to find ways to really get everybody on the same page so we can reduce that time. Right. Um, but there, there are these programs that these utilities have to help advance that. I mean, we're working together, you know, it doesn't have to be that pain. I feel like it right. becomes a pain when you don't realize what that runway is and you're trying to advance things as quickly as possible as, you know, we all want to. But if you're trying to do that and you're really pushing and pushing and it becomes less of a partnership, that's when it starts to fall apart a little bit. So working with utility, just making sure that you're on the same page early, that's that's huge. Yeah, and a lot of the OEMs have their uh, their e-mobility consulting groups. Yes. Right? Uh, talking with Rakesh in Asia at Daimler Truck North America, he heads up their e-mobility segment. Uh, he had a great takeaway that was, yeah, the challenge is if you talk to one utility, you've talked to one utility. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, yes. it, you, you kind of start from scratch every time you talk to someone, and now you have... California is clearly big in it, right? But mm -hmm. people are looking at Texas, they're looking at New York and the eastern uh, seaboard side. Uh, so seeing how that will all play out, clearly California is leading in a number of ways, especially, and this came out during the show, in regulation. Yes. Something that came out like on the Act Expo. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Which is a scary thing. I mean, so it doesn't, I don't mean to say that. It's it's not scary necessarily, but the, what I find scary is all the, the huge amount of legislation all happening kind of simultaneously right, right. now. And it's it's hard to understand, obviously. I mean, these, these rule books are like 400 pages long. Yeah. I mean, no one's reading these things. Right. And just understanding, okay, wait, where do my trucks need to be again? Right. What, what am I allowed to run? Where? Uh, I mean, that kind of thing can be scary until you start to understand it. The rule itself, not necessarily understanding, just or scary, I'm sorry, but understanding everything that's going on at once, it, it can be tough. It's a lot of complexity. It boils down to, I mean, the big headline was that in California, 2036, you cannot sell internal combustion engines, right? So clearly for trucks, that means diesel engines. Some trucks run gas engines. It also means, I mean, if you consider um, refrigerated transport, mm -hmm. those uh, trailer and truck refrigeration units, 
burn diesel to keep yeah. the loads cool. We're seeing a lot of uh, ETRUs come out, mm -hmm. right? Thermoking carrier all having theirs uh, come to the table. Very cool technology. But, and those have different subtle regulations and, and nuances compared to the trucks and power units. And everybody has a stake in this, right? So yeah, so really understanding. I mean, we're going to have a lot to talk about. I know we've started to dive into that. I've had a number of conversations uh, on that already, but it's going to be something we're going to be following very closely. It's the new, you know, if you think back on the uh, EPA emissions uh, regulations, which, you know, <laughs> it seems almost quaint now, but it was a huge, uh, a huge, <laughs> right. you know, lowering, lowering NOx and soot and all the particulates. It's a huge deal. Yeah. It was a huge deal then. It was complicated. Uh, manufacturers had to work through it. Fleets had to understand it. It's kind of, it feels like old hat now, and this is the new version of that. And I think what we're seeing too is, hey, what happens in California doesn't stay in California. There are states exactly that right. will follow suit, and we'll just have to see where it goes. Right, right. And we saw a lot of speakers at the show. They were showing maps. They're showing, okay, these states tend to follow quickly. These states are a little slower, but you know, it, you're right. It, it doesn't stay in California. It's something everybody needs to be aware of. And as these are coming out, we need to be understanding battery technology, yep. where it's headed, how it works, all of these things. And during one particular educational session, it was uh, all about EV batteries. A ton of it was over my head, to be honest. I mean, they were getting really nitty gritty. It, it was, I mean, it was fascinating, but holy cow, they, they really got into it. But one really, really interesting point that was made was that you're seeing uh, battery life from these different manufacturers, they're saying, okay, we've got, you know, a 10-year warranty on this battery or whatever it might be. That 10 years, it's it's not necessarily the life of the battery. You need to think about where you're running the battery, how often you're fast charging this battery, uh, how you're using the battery. It's more about the use of the battery that will signify the life of that battery. If you're really running this truck into the ground and fast charging it all the time, yeah, that battery life is probably going to be somewhat short. But if you're not doing that, if you don't have to fast charge it all the time, right. it's going to be a lot longer. And so it, these, these, the battery life, it's really hard to say, okay, this battery is going to last you 10 years and then you're good to go or you need a new one. No, it's more about, okay, you need to understand what your application is, right. where you're using it, where you plan to use it, that's going to give you a better sense of battery life. And we're just kind of figuring this all out right, right. now. I mean, to your point, it's new technology. Can I complicate matters even further? <laughs> Please. <laughs> you know, we, this year specifically, we've, we've started to see the rise of medium duty uh, battery electric vehicles as well, right? Yep. And it looks like, at least for the time being, uh, EPTOs, so power takeoffs, right? Mm -hmm. So that is Typically, if you're running the, the, the body of a truck, a, a dump truck, a bucket truck, anything like that, right? In a diesel engine, uh, you'd run the engine. Uh, it gets power to power the body. You raise and lower the booms. You raise and lower the bed. Everything's all good. You, you get on the road. EPTO is then having one battery pack on the truck chassis. So the battery pack that comes on the chassis, is your battery pack, you need to use that energy to power your attachment or body on the truck, right? So now it doesn't even become about range anxiety, right? We've talked a lot about that, of course, you and I in the past. Uh, now it comes about operational energy usage. Yes, uh, you know, especially you think about it, you have your local municipalities in bucket trucks, right? Yep. Working on things and they're running around. So the range isn't that crazy, right? Right, right. But they're going to operate that attachment for a couple yes. hours. Yeah. That's going to drain the battery. So, you know, figuring out those nuances and every little application is going to be different in how they use the battery. So mm -hmm. again, now it just becomes this, you start thinking about in terms of how do I want to use the energy to do work, yes. right? Yes, yes. So, I mean, we're talking a lot about battery electric, but while we're at the show, we're also seeing, we're seeing all kinds of stuff, including diesel. I yep. mean, a lot of diesel talk, there were, you know, um, Valvoline, Shell, these, these, traditional kind of diesel centric companies are all there touting like, hey, you can decarbonize now still using diesel by integrating XYZ product or, or whatever it might be. And so that was a big deal. We saw, we did see a lot of battery electric, but it was all across the board. Yeah. I think when you zoom out and you know, I, so I spent a lot of time in the Cummins booth, uh, when mm -hmm. we were running the show, they were a great partner. They hosted us a lot. Um, 
seeing the different decarbonization solutions in it right next to the electrification zero emissions one, right? So yeah. they had their inter inter internal combustion engine lineup. Uh, they had a cutaway of the uh, of a of a Peterbilt 579 with the hydrogen engine in it, right? Yeah. So okay, now I can understand. I'm familiar with the with the inner workings of an internal combustion engine. The hydrogen uh, delivery fuel de delivery system is new. Yep. But seeing it in a truck, it, it, it makes it approachable, right? They have the same kind of thing for natural gas. Their X15N platform will be rolling out here soon, mm -hmm. um, kind of redefining the role of natural gas uh, than it has been previously, I think. And there, there's more to come on that. But really understanding that and then sitting right next to, again, those zero emissions. Now it's Accelera by Cummins, right? That's how they're going to yep, market yep. on uh, the zero emissions, battery electric, hydrogen fuel cell. Any, it, it's kind of the umbrella under which they they brought their acquisitions. So Meritor, Siemens, all that kind of comes under that brand now. Mm -hmm. uh, makes a lot of sense when you're sitting there. But yep. that, yeah, a, a collection of solutions is going to be the path forward, right? And a yes. good demonstration of that, I thought. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and you saw it, you, like I said, you saw it across the board. You even saw, uh, you know, uh, the cell-centric, um, mm -hmm. you know, they, they had uh, at the Volvo booth, they had uh, kind of their kind of prototype engine in there that you could kind of see. So that was cool. Yeah, and, I, and what, what what's striking too is any... Uh, fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell, it, they're starting to look different too. Streamlined, yes. a little smaller, a little more compact. We've seen some before uh, in the past uh, that, again, can be replacements for where the diesel engine sits now. But these are starting to look far different from ones we've seen at shows previous. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Well, David, hey, great job out there. Thank you for coming and sharing everything you learned on the floor. Appreciate everything. Happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, until next year. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're checking in with Jose Samperio, Vice President, General Manager, North America on the highway for Cummins. We actually connected with him on the floor uh, in one of the previous episodes, but we're going to get his takeaways from the show now that the dust has settled. Uh, talk about where fleet's heads are at uh, in terms of these new sustainable technologies and also the role of internal combustions in decarbonization engines. So here we go. Jose, great to see you again. Uh, I think the last time we caught up was at ACT, so uh, good to connect here. Wanted to kick things off right away with uh, what were your big takeaways from the show? What stood, stood out from you uh, with your time on the floor? Yeah, thanks for having me and good to see you again. Last time we saw each other, it was a busy time over there. So there are a couple of things that stood out for me uh, on the floor. Number one is the number of different technologies that are uh, close to being available in the market. Some are, some are not, some are in development, some are ready. Uh, but either way, the amount of investment that this industry is going through is pretty impressive. When you compare back where we were two years ago, uh, even three years ago, even last year compared to now, it's pretty impressive how a long way we've come in making investments. Right, right. Well, and I think uh, the Cummins booth was an uh, excellent example of that because I'm pretty sure you had all segments uh, represented there on the floor. In, in that regard, too, so you're walking the floor, you're talking with customers. Uh, how serious are those conversations about investment in, in zero emissions equipment, um, it, you know, in the short term and long term? Are, they, are these serious conversations? Is it still kicking the tires on possibilities? Where Where's the industry at, do you think? Yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, I think it's a spectrum. Like many things in life, I guess, there is a spectrum of people that for many reasons, they are ready to adopt. Uh, either they have a customer base that is asking for it, they have the right operations that are conducive for these vehicles, they have the right funding, and everything is perfect for them to, yeah, I'm ready now to go and start purchasing these assets. And there are others that, again, idiosyncratic reasons of why they may not be a particular operation that is not conducive for these applications or these vehicles. Uh, their customer base is not there, a uh, particular size of the company. So I think there is a wide spectrum and there's definitely people on the left, meaning that I'm not quite ready, but I'm super interested, or definitely people on the right of, no, I'm ready to start purchasing. Tell me what are the options and let's go in there. And everything in between, there are people that they want to learn before they take the next step, but certainly a lot of interest of what all of this is. Right, right. And I, and, I, and uh, at least from my perspective, too, in some of the conversations, a... Uh, a perspective on an actual business case, right? It's not just, will the technology work? Can it do the job? It's now, will it work for my business? What is the ROI look like? I mean, we're starting to get to the point where uh, truck life cycles are kind of hitting that point where if, you, if you're going to make this this leap, it's going to come here in the next 
three to four to five years as opposed to further down the line. So interesting to see how that's becoming more of a business reality. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You may have heard me say this before, that the very first question that we go through when, or customers uh, ask us when we go through this is, does the technology get the job done? Meaning I have an operation that works like this, and does this technology help me achieve those goals of my operation? Before they even ask about cost or anything else is, can I get my job done? And then you move into the other aspects of, the, can I make a business case out of it? That's the cost part. And then you move into, do I have the infrastructure and do I have the service capability to do this? But the very first question is, can this technology get the job done? And can I make money with it? Right, right. Yeah, lots of headwinds there, as you mentioned. Infrastructure, for sure. We need technology uh, like hydrogen to really propel some of the long haul applications. In that regard, kind of looking at, at, at Cummins as a whole, too, uh, what's important to know or remember about the internal combustion engines? And even, you know, you had hydrogen on display, you had natural gas on display, you had uh, even more efficient diesel on display. How does that work into these conversations and, and holistic decarbonization strategies? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, the way we think about it is I, I, the internal combustion engine is just what we call a prime mover. It's just a machine that generates power that now you put into the wheels. The other aspect of it is what kind of fuel you put it, you put into that machine. So there are two different ways to look at it. And if we just say internal combustion engine, diesel as one thing going together, that's not necessarily how things work. You have to think about the machine, how efficient that machine is, internal combustion engine, and then whatever fuel you put in. And first, not only can the machine be more efficient, because you've seen it in the past 20 years, we've gone a long way on this technology, making it more efficient. Number one and number two, we found ways to put ever cleaner fuels into that machine, whether it be a biodiesel blend or a natural gas blend, renewable natural gas blend, or even hydrogen now. And then now all of a sudden, what used to be one technology, diesel internal combustion engine as one, now we're having an envelope of different possibilities that we can achieve with an internal combustion engine. Long run, I think it's a long run, a long way to go still for an internal combustion engine with different fuels. Right, right. Well, and like you indicated before, it seems as if uh, it, it's not so different from the, the specking decisions that, that fleets are used to making, right? The technology is a little new, but you, you to your point, you got to make sure you get the job done. So application drives a lot of those decisions. And then, yeah, the productivity and efficiency, we're just kind of in some new technology worlds and, and uh, options there. So very cool to, to hear that. I appreciate you taking the time. Wonderful to catch up with you. Yeah, no, thanks for taking the time. Thanks for having me. It's exciting times for sure. Hey, well, that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. We had a ton of fun bringing you all the news and insight from Act Expo 2023. Again, we want to thank Cummins for being our partner on this project, and we will see you in Vegas next year.